Okay, so now that we are successfully logging into the app, the next thing we need to do will be to retrieve information of the user that we just logged in. Say for instance, Uchen I just logged in into the app, we need to be able to retrieve the email address, the full name and the full number back into the app from the Firebase database. So we already know that the package that handles the login and registration is Firebase Authentication. So after the user have successfully logged in or has been successfully authenticated, we we'll need to go to our Firebase database and retrieve the information back into the app. So this is what we are going to be doing in this class. But before we continue, we need to go ahead and implement this code in the register view controller. So this is the code that sends um, the user into the main app just after the login has been completed. So why we need this code in the registration view controller is because so we want it to be that as soon as the registration is successful, we are going to go ahead and send the user directly into the main app. So I'm going to go ahead and paste the code here. Alright, so this will successfully take us from our registration view controller to our main view controller. So now let's return back to a login view controller. Okay, now to be able to retrieve information of the user, I'm going to go ahead and create a separate method that will take care of this for me. So I'm going to have void. So I'm going to call this fetch user info. So this method is going to take in a parameter. And the parameter is going to be user ID. So what we intend to do is that at this point, when login is successful, we're going to use the user ID and call this method. And this method will in turn retrieve the user information back into our app. So now what we need to do will be to go ahead and declare a database reference. So I'm going to have database reference. So this is going to be equal to database dot default instance dot get root reference dot get child. All right. So where do we want to get the information of the user from? We want to get it from the user table, and the ID of the user is user ID. So we're going to take a look at our Firebase database. So what we're actually doing with our reference is that we are pointing to this ID because what we are actually doing with our reference is that we are pointing to this ID and this is the information that we want to retrieve. We want to retrieve the email, the full name and the phone number. So that's why our reference contains users and the ID of the user which is this. Now the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and retrieve the values from this reference. So to do that I'm going to go ahead and say reference dot observe so there are actually two ways that you can use to observe an event in a particular reference so you can observe an event that if you want to continuously be looking at for data changes in a particular reference you can use observe event but if you want to retrieve the data in that particular reference just once we make use of observe single event so in this regard observe single event will suffice so the data event type is going to be data event type dot value. So we need to go ahead and set up a query completion handler. So here I'm going to have data snapshot. So I'm going to name this snapshot. All right. So we're going to go ahead and use lambda expression to implement this. And cool. So the first thing we we'll need to do is to confirm that our snapshot is not null. So if it's not no, it means that there is some data existing in this reference. So I'm going to go ahead and say if snapshot dot get value. So because we can't really be sure of the value, so I'm going to go ahead and make use of NS object, which is more like an object. In case we are not aware, an object can take or can contain any data type. Alright, so if this is not equal to NS no dot null. So like I already mentioned, this condition confirms that there is some data existing at this reference. Now all we need to do is to go ahead and retrieve the values at this reference. So I'm going to go ahead and define my email address, I have full name, and I have phone. Alright, now the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and start retrieving the values, right? 
So because this is a NoSQL database, there is a very high possibility that one of the data points that you're expecting might not be saved on the database, which might actually make your app to crash. So it's always very important to check for now before you can retrieve data at any reference. So I'm going to go ahead and check if we have email on the database first of all, before we can go ahead and start retrieving the email, the full name and phone. So I'm going to go ahead and say if snapshot dot get charge snapshot. So the charge snapshot that we're interested in is email. So we're gonna get the value. And the value is going to be NS object. So if this is not null, it means that this user has a valid email. So we need to go ahead and retrieve it. So I can easily go ahead and say email will be equal to snapshot dot get charge snapshot email dot get value of the type of NS object. And we're going to convert this to string. All right. So this is how to go about retrieving our email address. So a very safe way of doing this is to always do this check for every single chart snapshot that we want to retrieve. But from the way we designed our database, if this user has an email address, there's a very high likelihood that it will have full name and phone number. So we don't need to go ahead and do this check again. So we can just continue retrieving the full name and the phone number. So I can have full name will be equal to snapshot dot get charge snapshot so the charge snapshot of interest is full name we're gonna have get value so we need to also convert this to string so we need to go ahead and do the same thing for phone so this time around we're going to have phone here so we successfully retrieved the email full name and phone number of this user now the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and save this information into the user defaults which is more like the right thing to do because we always need to have this information saved locally so if we remember appropriately we did something similar in the registration view controller which is this so we need to go ahead and do the same thing here okay so i went ahead to define user defaults which is the normal process and we're able to save the phone number, the full name, and the email address. Another thing we need to save will be the ID. So I'm going to go ahead and say user default dot set string. So here I'm going to have user ID, and the key is going to be user underscore ID, which is the exact same thing we used in our registration view controller. All right. So this is basically all that we need to do in this method. But before we go ahead and make use of this method, it's better off that we'll copy this code, the code that actually signs in the user into the main app. I'm going to copy this from here and put it here so that everything just happens step by step. So this is very important. This is to ensure that our code flow is very proper because we really have a high taste for code organization. Now the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and call this method at this point. So this is the point that we've confirmed that our signing has been successful. So after the signing is successful, we'll go ahead and retrieve the user information. So I think I made a mistake here. All right. So we need to go ahead and call fetch user info. We're going to pass it our user ID. So this is going to be old data result dot user dot uid bam now to confirm that everything works i'm going to go ahead and add a breakpoint here so with this breakpoint here we'll be able to confirm the email address the full name and the phone number so it's time for us to test our app so let's go ahead and run it on a simulator okay so our app is starting okay so i'm going to go ahead and provide my email address and of course the password as well so let's go ahead and click on login. So these breakpoints that we have here will help us reveal the values of email, full name, and phone. All right. So I think the breakpoint has kicked in. So if I put my mouse here, you'll be able to see the value of our phone number. And this is our full name. And this is our email address. 
which is the exact same information that we have on our console. So this is basically how to go about retrieving information of the user from the database. So I'm going to finally go ahead and continue. So the information that we retrieved from Firebase database has also been saved locally and we successfully logged in into the main page. So this will be all for now. See you in the next class.